So, where was I? Oh, yeah. Final Fantasy VIII sucks, and you suck for liking it. It's a poorly written, badly designed piece of shit with annoying as fuck characters, a pointless card collecting minigame, and the most needlessly complicated and micromanaged character management system ever devised for any game. It's full of ridiculous meta game concepts, boring level grinding activities, and tedious magic collection busy work. The, the plot makes no sense, the weapons are ridiculous, and the setting is strangely underpopulated and technologically wildly anachronistic. It's long, boring, it's stupid, and I hate it with the fiery intensity of a million foreman grills. But before I actually get started, here's my final word on drawing magic in response to literally thousands of emails explaining just how wrong I was. Back when I first started, I mentioned how the game requires you to spend hours in combat pulling magic out of the monsters so that you can beef up your character attributes. And when I first played this game as a kid, I had to do it for every single spell in the game. And everyone and their mother emailed me with alternative ways to get magic, and in fact, they mailed me several step-by-step -step procedures to maximize my efficiency at this task, which could have only come through years of study and the worldwide collaboration of Final Fantasy VIII players in grand academic symposia. Honestly, it's sad how intensely some of you guys have studied and mastered this piece of crap. I had people emailing me all the time, ostensibly just to brag about how many times they've beaten the game, and with progressively more and more ridiculous restrictions on their own gameplay like all melee attacks, no melee attacks, no limit breaks, no GFs, only GFs, only squall, and all that effort, all that time squandered, and you could have been doing anything! ANYTHING! Like finding a game that doesn't blow ass! Well, you're entirely correct. You don't need to spend hours drawing every magic spell in the game to win. It's entirely possible, and in fact, preferable to refine items, cards, and magic spells using GF abilities to fill in your magic list. In fact, when I played through this game a second time, I did this quite a lot when I discovered you could refine 10 Kiragas out of a single tent, and junctioning that to my hit points basically quadrupled my score. Combine that with the GF ability to transform monsters into cards, and then refine the cards into magic, and you've got a pretty good system which keeps your level low and your magic stocked. That being said, I have a few things I'd like you to consider. First, this is ridiculous. I, I want you to think about this. This is a story where a group of people are bopping around the world, encountering monsters, and using some vaguely defined magic power taught to them by servant elementals, turning them into collectible playing cards in a game that everyone in the entire world plays. Now, where are they getting these cards? Uh, do they have the power to turn monsters into cards too? How is that possible? But not only that, these summon demons also have the power to turn common everyday items, as well as these playing cards, into mystical energy in the form of magic spells. You're telling me that I could go into a sporting goods store in this world, buy a tent, and tell the devil in my magic lamp to turn it into ten Kiraga spells? But do these spells take up tangible space? Are they in a book? Are they in my pocket? Why can I only carry a hundred of them? How does the character actually junction these spells to the hit points? Is it like a ring or a lotion or something? Where are your hit points located? I can also tell the devil to refine his own card into a hundred black holes, which I can then refine into the Demi spell, which is a great spell for junctioning to your attack stat. But what's a black hole? Do you actually mean to say that I'm carrying a hundred collapsed stars in my pants? And I got all that from a playing card? And even with that, you still need to draw a lot of magic, it's still busy work, it's still boring, and even though you found a slightly more convenient way to get magic outside of combat, aren't you really still substituting one kind of busy work for another? And I don't care how good the rare triple triad cards are, the items you get simply aren't worth the effort of playing hours of this pointless fucking card game. Got it? Drawing magic still sucks, the magic system is still overly complicated, needlessly metaphysical, and completely nonsensical in the way it's arranged. And you can stop emailing me about it, okay? Moving on! When we last left our heroes, the group tried to kidnap the president of Galbadia by staging a complicated train robbery, but despite all their careful planning, they didn't know the president has a zombie body double specifically made to foil this exact kind of thing. You know, the president having an undead body double would have made the movie Dave much more interesting. Hail to the chief, he's the one we all say hail to. Dave's a working class ordinary guy with big dreams for America. I once caught a fish this big. So he decided to run for president. Do I need to tell nine? But Dave's just got one little problem. He's secretly a zombie. Is this legal? Oh, yeah. Probably. 
He's just dying to get in the Oval Office. Has this guy been having too many Happy Meals for lunch or what? Dave of the Dead. He may not have the brains you need to be president, but he's working on it. I'm gonna kill him. Can't kill a president. Dave of the Dead. Because you can't kill the president if he's already dead. Anyway, with the train kidnapping botch, the party returns to Timber to come up with a new plan. Apparently, the president's already in Timber and is headed to the local TV station to make some kind of national address. This shocks everyone since nobody's been able to broadcast in 17 years because of some kind of signal interference that's been blanketing the world. Why? I don't know. But uh, all communications in this world now take place through something called HD cables. The group guesses that's why Galbadia invaded and sent Biggs and Wedge to fix the transmission tower so they could use it in an attempt to broadcast, even to places without cable. Well, if they don't have cable, they probably don't have fucking televisions either! And even if they do, they won't know when you're making this broadcast! Not unless you, like, drop TV guides out of a fucking airplane! And really, it took them 17 years to come up with this plan. Really, find and repair a gigantic fucking transmission tower. Uh, weren't they using those 17 years ago when the interference hit? If those had worked, they'd still be using them! I don't know, maybe the president knows something we don't, but I guess people are still holding out hope because someone's still maintaining the 60-foot-wide Jumbotron in timber, even after 17 years of radio silence, and it's on 24 hours a day displaying the same random interference. What, are people still watching it? They got nowhere else to put it? Why wouldn't they just turn it off? And why does it look like the TV is displaying code from the Matrix? And why in the hell is there still a fully functional TV broadcast station in town? Wishful thinking? Oh, and if radio communications are impossible, why is Biggs able to summon the mechanical spider with a wireless fucking remote? I hate this fucking game! Anyway, Renault decides to attack the TV station to broadcast their own declaration of Timber's independence because... Uh, I guess she'll just send the armed commandos screaming in terror. Zone shows up to say that the president's in the station already preparing to make a speech, and because of that there's too many guards in there to handle. Abort! Abort! The guy we knew was going to be at the TV station is at the TV station with the guards we knew he would have! Did we have a plan? Well, I guess they were worrying over nothing because apparently the president's guards are easier to beat than the Detroit Lions because Cypher faces literally no resistance as he charges directly into the studio and holds the president hostage. And somehow, don't ask me how, Quist is his right on his ass. She turns around and starts screaming into the camera for backup. And when you get there, she explains that Cypher broke out of the disciplinary room and went rogue. Well, this just proves Cypher's gay because trust me, any straight guy stuck in a place called the disciplinary room with Quistus? He wouldn't want to leave. Everyone starts trying to talk Cypher down, but things start to escalate when Zell just calls Cypher an idiot. Cypher fires back by calling Zell a chicken wuss. And honestly, even though I give Cypher a lot of shit, I don't know why they're trying to browbeat him so hard. He just accomplished what we've been trying to do all fucking day, kidnap the president. I say let's steal a car, throw his fat ass in the trunk, and get the fuck out of here. Give Cypher a medal. Zell, the tit, lets it slip they all come from one of the gardens, and he does this with the broadcast cameras rolling, no less, so it basically ensures a global shitstorm about to descend on the gardens. Now, at first it seems like Zell is officially the dumbest jackass on the planet, but it's not like it's impossible to figure out these guys are seeds. After all, their faces are being broadcast to literally every TV on the planet, and both Cypher and Squall are using gunblades, which we know to be the trademark weapon of Seed Special Forces. And besides that, how many international mercenary armies really exist on this planet anyway? Cypher backs up directly into a shadowy masked woman known as the Sorceress, and she appears from a magic portal. She starts to taunt him by calling him a boy and mocking his inexperience and immaturity. The boy in you is telling you to come. Yeah, it is. But the adult in you is telling you to back off. Don't be ashamed to ask for help. Besides, you're only a little boy. Stop calling me a boy! You don't want to be a boy anymore? I am not a boy! I am a